If you were to climb the tallest point on the planet, aka Mount Everest, with a summit height of 8,848.9 meters or 29,031.7 feet, you might encounter something strange. As the summit area of this towering peak contains surprisingly abundant fossils embedded within grey colored rock. There, you can encounter brachiopods, broken shell fragments, crinoids, and even trilobites. So, how exactly did fossils end up on the planet's highest point? The answer relates to how Mount Everest and the overall Himalayas formed, which is a story of collisions, uplift, faulting, and erosion. While many people think of all of Asia, ranging from India to Vietnam to China to central Russia, as one singular giant continent and thus one tectonic plate, the reality is far more complex than this. For example, almost all of India and parts of surrounding countries comprise its own smaller tectonic plate referred to as the Indian Plate. While this tectonic plate is actively colliding with the Eurasian Plate to the north, this is not always the case. As, if we go back 470 million years, what is today's southern Nepal was instead the site of a shallow ocean that was teeming with life. Here, brachiopods, crinoids, trilobites, and other Ordovician age life forms scurried amongst the coral reefs. As these hard shelled creatures or organisms with hard parts eventually died, they fell to the bottom of the ocean. Over time, they were buried, and this material soon compacted to become a rock type known as limestone. As part of a large supercontinent that was directly connected to modern day Africa, Antarctica, and Australia, the Indian tectonic plate drifted towards the South Pole. Then, around 100 million years ago, the Indian subcontinent separated from Antarctica and the island of Madagascar, heading north into the open ocean as an island. By 60 million years ago, the northern part of this tectonic plate reached the equator and continued northwards. Finally, 50 million years ago, the Indian subcontinent began colliding with the Eurasian tectonic plate in what is known as a convergent collision. Not only did this force the Eurasian plate and significant volumes of adjacent limestone upwards, but it also caused the subducting Indian plate slab to snap off. The Himalayas continued to be constructed over the following tens of millions of years, with Mount Everest rising by 8 kilometers elevation during the last 30 million years. Erosion and faulting removed what used to be its top layer, leaving a layer of fossiliferous limestone on its summit. And this is how fossils ended up at the highest point on the planet. However, there is more to the geology of Mount Everest's summit, as we can see via this photograph. It contains four distinct layers, which each represent different rock units. The top gray rock unit is referred to as the Cuomo-Lingma limestone, which is 470 million years old, which is the fossiliferous limestone. Directly beneath, there used to be a layer of limestone here, but intense metamorphic pressures changed limestone into a yellow-tinted marble, which is referred to as a yellow band marble. Beneath this was a light black layer of what used to be sedimentary rock that directly underlied the Ordovician limestone. However, metamorphic pressures changed this rock into what is referred to as pelite, which is a type of metasedimentary rock. Underneath this, pressures were more extreme, changing the sedimentary rock into the high-grade metamorphic rock known as schist. And finally, beneath this were metasedimentary rocks, which also contained scattered ancient intrusions of granite. This granite represented ancient solidified intrusions of rhyolite composition magma, largely forming around 20 to 30 million years ago. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe if you enjoyed this video. As a final note, I would like to thank my new YouTube member Holly Bird for supporting this channel.